There was no weapon that was brandished. Mr. McLaughlin was not armed. And what is the most telling is that everyone keeps saying that Mr. McLaughlin was shot in his chest. He was shot in his side. Thank you. He was shot in his side. If he was shot, if he was advancing and getting ready to do more harm to Mr. Draca, why was he shot on his side when he was getting ready to turn around? But yet, Mr. McLaughlin is not here with his family, but Mr. Draca is walking around the streets of Clearwater, free as a bird. And the other issue is that you cannot provoke a fight and then hide behind, stand your ground. Because that's really what's happened. Everyone who has, who has knowledge of this store and who was, who's from Clearwater and who knows someone who knows someone knows that Mr. Draca over and over and over and over caused problems as early as last month. And yet he was provoking a fight and now he's walking around and he's hiding behind the law of stand your ground. So for a little information for you, as you know, we, I just said Mr. McLaughlin was shot in the side. He was not shot in the chest. And it's consistent with the story that Ms. Jacobs has shared and other witnesses have shared that he was backing up, that the, after he pushed him, the altercation was done. And right now, the case is actually still with the sheriff's office. It's not yet been referred to the state attorney. And while it is still with the sheriff's office, we understand that there's some procedural things that need to happen. We're asking for the sheriff's department to continue investigation. While they are, you know, preparing the case to go to the state's attorney, we're asking that they would continue an investigation. Um, we believe and we're confident and we're very hopeful that the office of Bernie McCabe will do the right thing in this in this case and will file charges against Mr. Draca. We're asking the office of Bernie McCabe to file charges against Mr. Draca because if not, they're, they're sanctioning a murder, plain and simple. And we're asking that the office of the state attorney will make the right decision. And I know, you know, we decided to hold this in a way because I know a lot of people wanted to be able to ask a few questions. We're gonna take limited questions um, and, you know, wanted to be able to ask questions of, of, of uh, the parents and of Ms. Jacobs. Um, and just so we're clear, she is represented by counsel. Um, uh, Mr. Crump is uh, her attorney. I don't believe that he's present. Um, but she is represented by counsel as well. So if there's specific legal questions for her, you can refer that to her counsel. Um, but that's what we're here for. That's what we're asking for. We're asking for justice for this man, this man that was loved by so many people and that was thought of by so many people and that was essentially murdered. Michelle, are you concerned that this, if it's allowed to go through as it is right now, that this is going to kind of be open season? people starting fights and then getting involved with a gun battle like this? Yeah, it's going to be open season because you're sanctioning that I feel like, I can feel like, you know, someone, you know, is, is I'm in imminent danger of, you know, being harmed or great bodily harmed or someone's going to take my life. And it could become open season and then you're going to have people hiding behind this law. And that, you know, different people have different opinions that needs to be repealed, it needs to be rewritten. Where it is right now, we've already talked about there's nuances and, and things that aren't clear within the law and different judges apply it differently and those kinds of things. For a family member, can you tell us this this case is in just a couple of days of the national headlines reigniting the debate on stand your ground. As a family member who lost a loved one, how do you feel about this case being kind of at the center of the attention of stand your ground right now? At the mic please. You can go. <clears throat> well me personally obviously I don't like it because it was my son. But I think this type of um, this type of stuff has been going on for way too long, far too long. We need to put an end to this. Any kind of law that allows one man to kill another man, and the man that pulled the trigger don't even get fingerprinted, needs to be needs needs to stop. Something needs to be done. I know I fell off the phone too. Go ahead. Go ahead. My son witnessed this whole thing. A five-year-old. Witness this whole thing. Yes. A five year old, five, not 12 years old, not 13, but a five years old. You know, this is messed up. And a child should never see nothing like that. 
Now my kids will never be the same without their father. They going through things right now, which is hard for me. I'm trying to stay strong for them. And it's breaking me down, but I'm staying strong. And a five-year-old should have never witnessed that, man. Never, never should have never witnessed that. And that's messed up. That's messed up. This man came to me. This man was armed. He could have killed my whole family. You know what I'm saying? I don't know this man. I don't know this man at all, and Marquise did not know this man at all. And all he was trying to do was protect what was his. And that was his family. That was his kids. Mr. McLaughlin, I'm curious now that you've learned more about uh, Mr. Draco over the past few days. Do you think he was looking for a fight and trying to target someone based on his track record? Absolutely. And why do you think that? Well, because <clears throat> actually, uh, I guess as of last month, um, there's a guy that I, that I found out and actually that I knew, uh, that I know. And uh, he told me about the incidents that he had with Mr. Draper last month. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was pretty much the same thing. This guy was parked in the handicapped spot. Mr. Draper came up to him, called him every name in, on the face of this earth, then threatened that he was going to shoot him. Uh, at this time, this guy, he was driving in his company truck. So Mr. Draco got the phone number off of the truck and actually called that company and told him and left a message on the answer machine saying that the next time I see this guy parked in this handicapped spot, I'm going to shoot him. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and anyone who's from Clearwater, and you know, I'm, I'm from Clearwater, everybody knows that store that's right there. And everybody... That's not even, and I, I, I don't want to say this, you know, in a, in a way that's not respectful, but that's everyone I have known has ever parked there, parked their car running there. It is a store that has been there for years. It's a store that's been there since I was a kid. And I'm not going to tell my age, but it was there when I was a child. So, um, and the fact that Ms. Jacobs and Mr. Mark Lockton were involved in a dispute over a parking spot that I think that we're forgetting that Mr. Draco wasn't even entitled to. He wasn't handicapped. He wasn't, he wasn't, he, he didn't have use of that. If he felt a crime was happening, like whenever we feel like a crime is happening, what do we do? We call law enforcement. So if he actually felt a crime was happening, why didn't he call law enforcement? Why didn't he go into the store and report it to the owner that he was essentially jumping into something that had nothing to do with him. Their car was running, Mr. McLaughlin ran into the store to get his kids some snacks and he was coming right back out. What gave him the empowerment to feel that he could actually do that? And I'll ask you, Michelle, you said everyone in the community knows the story that Mr. McLaughlin just recounted. Um, you are, you have an investigator as well conducting information and getting information about this case. Can you speak at all about what your investigation Actually, we cannot, um, just because it is still an open investigation or it's going to be an open investigation with the state attorney. And what we don't want to do is compromise anything. But I would say that that's what's important for the sheriff's office to continue doing. The story that he just told is exactly what the sheriff's office should be following up on. Because understand your ground, there is the entire section that allows somebody's character to propensity for violence to come in to combat a stand your ground defense. So that is a witness the sheriff's office should have interviewed um, and followed up on other reports that may have happened. And, and I mean, the fact of the matter is we don't have the police reports. The police reports are not finalized. They're not public record yet. So we don't know what information the sheriff's office followed up on. But that's why this is not a stand your ground case. From start to finish, this is not a stand your ground case. And that man does not have a stand your ground defense. Absolutely. So have you all reached out to the state attorney's office? Have you gotten any feedback, giving them the information that you have so far? Well, the state attorney's office can't do anything until the reports are in their hands. And so that's a process. It can take several days, depending on how much information, how many witnesses, um, I'm confident that the state attorney's office will look at this case very closely. Um, they file on many cases where stand your ground is claimed as a defense. I've, I've 
had many of those cases myself <laughs> and have had to fight those in court. So I'm actually very confident that once the state attorney's office receives all this information from the sheriff's office and the police reports that they'll go about the right process and, and have this man indicted. And, and to that end, what typically having the experience level of trying criminal cases is the filing and the incident, what is the timeline? It could be, it could be. It could be months. months. It could be any timeline. So, it, it you know we the most case instant case I can think about is Trayvon Martin, where you know Trayvon Martin was killed in fe end of February, and that um, you know he who shall remain nameless was um, indicted, um, I believe in April. So it you know there was about you know two month period there. So here's the thing, if it's going to take two months to get an indictment, that's what we want because we want it done right. We don't run a rush decision. We want him to be charged appropriately because that's the other thing is if he's overcharged and it does go to trial, that becomes an issue as well. So I believe just talk, speaking with Miss um, with Mrs. Moore and Mr. McLaughlin, they want this process to be done correctly. They want this process to be done right. They want to make sure that the right charging decision has been made. So that's something else that we're confident in me having dealt with the office of Bernie McCabe on several occasions that we I'm confident that they will do their due diligence when looking at this case and they will talk to the um, the witness that um, Mr. McLaughlin mentioned and, and some of the other people that they will actually do their due diligence and make a charging decision. Uh, the location of the wound you just said was you believe the side and not the chest. Correct. Where does that information come from? Is there an autopsy or, or anything that has confirmed that? Um, I can tell you when I went into the store it was on his left what is this abdomen? Abdomen. Yeah, right there. And when I was trying to bring him back, he was bleeding. And by that time, he passed. So I know where it was. And it was not his chest. So I'm tired of y'all saying it was his chest. It's not his chest. Brittany, um, a lot of people have mentioned they've watched the video, but they haven't heard any any of the audio from what happened. No I'm curious if, if a threat was made or, or you heard anything that would have prompted what happened. Yes, he told me to move my fucking car. That's what he told me to do. Uh, and did, what was Marquise's response when he came up to him? What did he say? Get away from my girl. Like, who wouldn't protect that girl? Who in here wouldn't protect that girl? Like, so you, their family, who wouldn't do that? He never said, I'm gonna kill you, nothing like that. No. He pushed I, him and asking. he backed away. But before, he, before the push, he said, get away from my girl. Right. Okay. Michelle, I yes. might be a dumb question legally, but do, do you know if Mr. Dreyka has lawyered up? Do you I have any indication of this? Have you made any attempt to reach out to people representing him? I don't know if he's lawyered up. Um, I have no information with regard to that. But I also want to go back to um, the wound, the gunshot wound on um, Mr. McLaughlin's side. You can actually, if we watch the video and carefully, you can actually see him holding his side. He's not holding his chest. He's holding his side. So it's very clear that he was turning around, that when he said what he said and he pushed him, and I don't, I'm not going to get into the semantics if it was a hard push or not, when he pushed him to remove himself from being planted in front of his family's vehicle, that he was done. And between the push and when the shot was fired, there were no words exchanged between the two? Nope. Okay. And what is so telling is that, and I believe the sheriff even did this, I think he counted out to about four seconds. It took about four seconds. And if we're counting one, two, three, four, I've already made several decisions in my head in that four seconds. So Mr. Draca made a conscious decision to take Mr. McLaughlin's life. So is it puzzling to you that the, even though the police reports aren't, aren't finalized, the press release and the information coming out of the sheriff's office said that he was shot in his chest, is it puzzling to you that they get, came to that conclusion? I mean, I think it's still preliminary. It is puzzling to me. However, I can't, because I don't know what actually the finalized police reports say. I don't know. I can't really make, speculate on, on that. I'm going to take about two more questions. We're going to wrap up. Um, Read the, the past, the witness that we've talked about a few times um, and some of the past incidents. That was brought up at the sheriff's office news conference on Friday and the sheriff kind of said that he has to consider just that moment that those past experiences can't be considered when deciding whether or not this fits the standard ground criteria. Um, how would you respond to that and is there anything specific in the law that addresses past 
I think I think Ms. McCabe just touched on it that there is a section in the statute that you can look at the propensity with regard to that. So she kind of just touched on that. Um, I do also want to get back to the question. I believe um, the puzzling nature of uh, the. The, where the wound is and uh, versus the chest and the side. I do not believe that the medical examiner has reached out to you. The medical examiner has not reached out to, um, has not reached out to um, Mr. McLaughlin, Ms. Moore, and or Ms. Jacobs as well. Just to tell them that his body was ready, but nothing about where the wound was or the trajectory of the bullet or anything like that. And those reports, of course, haven't been released yet. And um, Catherine, I think you had a question. Did you have a question earlier? Okay. Any any other questions or we're gonna wrap it up? All right, we thank y'all so much for coming um, and we just thank you so much um, for being here. We just do ask the public to keep the pressure on the Office of the State Attorney. We're asking them to keep calling, to keep writing letters. Mr. McLaughlin, do you have any final words? We just want justice. That's all we want. We want justice. And to you, whoever you are, Mr. State Attorney, do the right thing, man. Look at the tape. Yes, I just want justice also. Because it didn't have to happen. I also want justice too because, like I said, my kids would never be the same without their father. They would never be the same. So thank y'all so much for coming out. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you. R-A-Y-N-E-R.